Hello, it's Joey, and today I'm making altered envelopes for junk journals. They have a collage front which I've done using old book pages and scraps of pretty paper. I've used gentle shades of teal which give them a vintage style. I make this flower on the left which doesn't need a die or a template and I do it all step by step. It's really very easy. My passion is playing with paper. It always has been and it always will be. And here on my channel what I do is I make and fill junk journals like these. So I use old book pages, I use scraps of paper and then I make things to put in them. So I make journaling cards, I make tags and pockets and occasionally what I do is I get my paint palette out and I splosh around with that. I'm currently planning a new series on my channel called Junk Journal Step by Step starting from the beginning and it's really about helping you get more from your time and money on your junk journaling journey. I'll be dealing with questions like what is a junk journal? How does it differ from maybe a glue book or an altered book? What supplies do you need to get going and what do you not need and how do you stop yourself from spending too much? Also what purpose does a junk journal have? And this is a comment I get a lot on my channel so I will try answering that and also maybe what do we do with them when we've made them and perhaps when we've made so many. For me and maybe for you too, playing with paper and making and filling junk journals is more than a hobby. I would say it's an obsession but it's really a great way to relax, it's a way to escape and you can create your own little sanctuary at your desk. My desk here with my lovely twinkly lights is very much my happy place and today I just wanted to do something a bit different and invite you in to come along and craft with me. Don't forget to subscribe if this is something that you think you'll enjoy. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you're doing at your craft desk at the moment and let's make those altered envelopes. To make our altered envelopes we need fundamentally a book page and the book page that I'm going to be using is this medium size page from it's a, a Disney children's storybook and it's glossy and the individual pages are relatively thick you can use any size of book page for this and really any texture but I thought this was a great project for using some of our glossy pages which we perhaps find more difficult to use in our junk journaling projects so I'll show you how to make up the envelope really quickly and this project came about because I needed to do something with the plethora of handmade envelopes that I made some time ago and I do have a, a video showing lots of different ways of making and decorating envelopes that's a lot of fun I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below but we need a piece of paper for the envelope and we need let me share these with you let me share oh let me share these beautiful papers we need for the front of this altered envelope some patterns of scrapbook paper or old remnants from a digi or old book pages anything ideally in the hues of the palette that you choose and I'm choosing these beautiful fawns and browns and teals. So we're going to collage with little pieces of paper so we'll do a bit of ripping up and gluing which is always fun and for the, the flower which is a five petal flower and again I'll show you how to make that with a very easy technique we perhaps need a little focal point in the middle, a bit of fabric and I think on one of these I've added just a little label underneath here again in these vintage colours so it's basically book page other book pages scrapbook paper fabric for texture and of course a pair of scissors and with that we can get on and make our altered envelopes so let's tear a page out of here and quickly make one envelope and I would suggest that for this project you might want to make quite a few I am going to use a scoreboard today but you don't have to have one it just makes life easier for putting those little score lines in the paper 
So to start with, what I'm doing is taking the score indentation that is nearest to the edge. And this is probably about a centimetre and a half in my little wooden scoreboard. I bought this at a local craft shop. I have seen them on eBay, so they are available elsewhere. So let's just put a score line. Probably easiest to go moderately gently two or three times and to go really hard because you might put your little scoring tool through the paper. And basically what I've got is ready-made fold so that we can have crisp lines on the right and on the left. To make the envelope fold up I'm going to put an indentation, a score, on in this case the third score line up and then I'm going to put a score line for the top flap of the envelope. So this will be this way up and I put a score line where I'll be folding up on the bottom. So for this size of envelope, I'm going to use the second score line. Now, where on earth is she choosing, or how on earth is she choosing which of those score lines to use? Let me explain. When our envelope is folded, we want the top flap to overlap the bottom flap by about a centimetre, no less. So this flap here overlaps the bottom flap by about a centimetre. So what I have done with these is make sure that the grooves that I choose when I fold up and then fold the top down are going to allow the papers to overlap by about a centimetre or two. And there might be a bit of trial and error but if you use this sort of method you can use any shape of paper or book page to make your envelopes and you're free to go using everything from there on. So having scored my book page, let's just make those a little bit crisper to allow us to do the, do the trimming, do the cutting, do the snipping, which takes out a few little pieces before we glue it together. And in this project, I said it was quite an easy one. I am just going to collage on the front of the envelope. And the reason I do that is for many of our junk journal projects. So for m many of the pages that we put into a junk journal, we then augment them with an envelope that sits on the top and we don't see the back of the flap and we don't see much of the back of the envelope. So I thought it would be okay for many of our envelopes that we want to use to have it lifting out like this and not really worrying about decorating everywhere on the envelope. And that makes it super quick, super fun as a project. Let me, let me show you a different one. So the contrast, the alternative would be spending more time collaging the whole of the piece of paper. So this is what I did in last week's video. And as a result, what we get is beautiful effects and texture on all of the flaps. And that might be something you want to do, but it does take more effort. So today's is a little bit quicker and it's maybe one that you want when you want to do when you don't have as much time or when you don't feel like concentrating as much. So now I have a piece of paper with score lines vertically and horizontally and they're in the places where I want them. So I will do my usual snippety snip, taking out some little areas at the bottom and the top to create the flaps. So I will take out a little area from the bottom flap which will be slightly bigger than the rectangle that we've created from the folds. So I'm going to take out, by putting my scissors just to the left of the fold, an area at the bottom and I'm going to go slightly above and at an angle to take out the rest of that piece. So I have a piece here that is not a rectangle, it's angling slightly to be wider at the bottom and this length is slightly wider than that. And I'll just do the same 
on the other side. So put your scissors just to the right of the fold and take your scissors to the point of intersection of the folds, the vertical and the horizontal, and then take out just a bit more than the rectangle. And that is enough to give us a flap for the bottom. And what I like to do is do something similar at the top, but take out a little bit more so that I have a bit more of a slant on those flaps and they look a bit more like a top flap. And the only thing you need to do, and I think it's doable by eye, is to try to make each of these flaps relatively similar. So a little bit more of an angle, take that out and that's the body of our envelope made. And I can carry on at this point and actually glue all of the flaps down. I think I'll use a dryish glue. A little bit of glue on the right hand side there and on the left. And my top tip at this point is don't take your glue absolutely all the way to this point here because there's a little gap that we created with the angle on our flaps. And what that does irritatingly is allow glue that's taken too near to this fold to stick this piece to this piece. So start your gluing just slightly lower down and that's absolutely enough and we'll keep all of the flaps in place. And then we can fold up. And how easy is that for making an envelope that we can now have some fun decorating and collaging? So back to my beautiful book pages in all different shades of vanilla and beige and I'm going to take a few pieces and build up a collage using medium sized pieces I think for this one. I don't need absolutely teeny tiny pieces and also that's one of the things that makes this relatively quick as a project. I do like these very, very aged book pages. I like ones with different font. This has got a very nice bold type to it. And I know that I want to build in some of these teal shades. So I think for this project, it's about diving in and getting going and not really needing to think too much. What I know I want to do, and I've learned from practicing on a few of these, is have some color, whatever my, my color palette theme is, at the top left and a bit more of a flash of it somewhere else. So the only thinking I'm going to do in terms of choice of papers and position is think about a top left and an, an almost bottom right positioning. So why don't I pick some teal paper and get going? And I've already made a mess, but hey ho, who, who worries about mess when we're crafting? So why don't we take... Hmm, I'm going to start with something up here. That's quite a big piece and I think I'll use a relatively liquid glue and I'm going to use the ye olde technique that I've now used multiple times in the collaging projects on my channel and just put glue in the centre of the piece of paper to begin with and that can go, it is a large one but I might cover up some of the edges. That can go top left and I know that I definitely want some other form of teal down here. In fact, it is too big. So even though I've stuck some on, I think I'm going to just whittle that down. That's better. Something top left. And in fact, I might use that. Should I use that? I'm not using that because the arc is going to the left. And I don't know, I just want it to be sweeping up there. So I'll steal a bit more and get that down here. Even though it's upside down, I really don't mind that at all. I think I'm going to have I'm going to have that over here. I don't want it in the bottom corner. If I had something that was top left and bottom right corner, I feel it's over designed. So just sharing what's going on in my mind and trying to explain why I'm putting things where I put them. I am going to have a piece of this beautiful 
aged paper. So how can I get that on the bottom left? So I'm going to get that on there. Oh, I'm torn. It's got even nicer font on the back. Oh no, how can we how can we agonize over tiny pieces of paper? Do you sometimes get stuck when you're crafting and just just can't make a decision and and how can you regret tearing a piece of paper up in the wrong way? There are billions of pieces of paper in my craft room and I'm worrying about one. I do not know. If that makes any sense at all, please let me know. So let's have that as an under over. In fact, let's get rid of, let's move some of this so you can see a bit better. So I've got teal top left, collage down here, and I'll go back to that beautiful piece. There it is. That I'm going to have over here, which I know. Ooh, actually, I like that. I can get it the right way up. Glue on there. And it's nice to know that the hard work is done because what we've done is got the colour palette that we've chosen, the dominant colour in the places where we want it. So all I need to do now is very easily go through my papers and fill in. really like the idea of having a bit of Shakespeare on here. So a nuance too. A nod to the comedy of errors. And it's quite dainty paper, this one, so it's a bit different. So I will tuck that under there and keep going. I like the contrast of the whitish paper here and the very yellowed paper. And ironically, this is an older book than this one. So it isn't always that the oldest books are the most gnarled and vanilla in and colour and beige bit of a map page, a road atlas. I think that would work really well down at the bottom left and if I just take a little bit more off that can probably, I, don't, I think that can still go underneath. Some of this teal that I put down will be covered up by the flower so I don't mind that it is really a very dominant piece. So that can go under there and I think we're getting there. We're getting there. It always feels a bit naughty to rip from a full 12 by 12 piece of paper. What do you think? Is that also something that discloses that I'm crackers? Let's have something coming across. Does that need to go underneath? Yes, I think it does. Yes, and now we've got some beautiful layers coming out. Yeah. It doesn't take long, does it, to fill a small envelope like this? So I obviously need a little bit up here. So this is a lovely old book. I love it when we see more information on a page, like an index. So this is pound, shilling and pence. Old book, beautiful. Let's have a bit of that on the right hand side here to take that down. Glue in the middle. Let's tuck that in. Great. Some old packing paper from I think this was Amazon or IKEA and I've stamped on it and added some of my gold glue sticks. I think I don't want to cover up everything there. Let's see if we can tuck that behind. So I'm obviously being relatively disciplined at choosing the colours of paper and book page. And that's about all the discipline is on this one. It really is that easy. So we have already a collaged envelope. I just need to go round and glue all of these flappy bits which I'll do with my glue and then we can give it a border with a pen. So 
after that's well glued down I will trim off the excesses on the side I think I prefer it that way you could leave those little extra pieces on I quite like this little flappy bit curling up so I'm going to leave that I'll give this a little bit of extra glue this isn't one that I'm sewing so on a lot of my projects recently like the the heart on an index card that I did the other week I sewed around it and that really helps add some robustness to hold the collage down but on this one I'm just using glue no sewing required so easy peasy we have a, an envelope that has been collaged and I'm ready to do the decoration on top so while this one is drying so the glue is just a little bit wet still I'm going to make the flower and the flower is just two layers of petals that I've cut out of a couple of pieces of squared paper so the key to begin with is just to cut out or tear, tear tearing is fine a couple of pieces of paper that you want to be the the flower head so I am going to use I think this spotty one I think that goes quite well as a contrast to the teals behind still in the same family of colours and one of the flower heads will be a pattern and the other one will be a piece of book page I just think which one works well just picking a book page that goes with the rest of the pieces of paper that I've used in the collage and I think I'm going to choose I think I'm going to choose the paler one and the, before I cut out or rip the piece of squared paper to make the flower I'm going to get some texture on it we could do this after we've made the flower head but it might be easier if we just do it now just taking an ink pad and some form of stamp I like to use ones with text but you want something that's relatively delicate I'm going to get some stamp of this onto the book page and I've chosen an ink pad in relatively coordinating colours and this is an ombre one I've used it quite a few times recently again I used it on the book pages that I coloured for this collaged envelope so this one is Collider Colour Raised Rainbow Dye Ink Pad in Royal Satin and it is a range of colours starting with a very 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 deep very deep teal sort of bluey green coming up to a little bit of cheeky red let's do that again childish but I enjoy it let's get some of that text onto our book page and then I will tear this down to be a square that I'll fold and cut to make the flower I want the larger of the two flower heads to be the book page behind because I want to see most of the pattern and the colour so the smaller flower is going to come from this spotty page and I want about six centimetres seven centimetres square piece of paper so I'll go to about I'll go to about seven centimetres that's probably good for this project and tear a piece off So it's one of those projects where you can be quite rough and ready with your crafting, not too much intricate work. And I want a squared piece to come from this, so being lazy I will fold at the corner, just make a little mark and I know that that's going to be a square, I'll fold it back tear that off that's all I need to make one of my flower heads so we'll fold and cut in a minute and now I want a piece from a book page that is a little bit bigger so that when we cut it down this sticks out and we can see some of the pretty stamping that we've done so I do want on the flower head there to be text peeping out on the petal behind so I'm going to cut a square out of here that is predominantly from the 
area on the page that's covered by text. So let's just have a go at that. Tear a piece down. I'll put this on. So I know this is going to be bigger. So I'll go to about, I'll go about an extra centimetre on either side. I'm just making a squared piece of paper, focusing on using the text as design. Do my lazy test again. Fold across. I've just got a little bit too much down there. And just a square piece of paper. One in a book page and one in a piece of scrapbook paper, ready to fold to make our flowers. So now we will do the cutting and folding to make the flower head. And I'll start with the larger piece. So take our squared piece of paper and fold it in half. Nice, crisp fold. Press that down. Take this corner at the bottom right and position it a third of the way down this edge. So we're going to take this bottom right point and fold it up to about a third of the way down on this left hand edge. So let's do that. Folded that bottom right, I folded the bottom right corner and I've positioned it to be a third of the way down this edge. So we had a square, we folded it up and we have folded that bottom right hand point to be a third of the way down this edge. I'm going to fold from here over to the left. I take my little point here and position it to sit over the top of the previous fold. So the point, this point here, is still going to sit a third of the way down the left hand edge. So fold that over. Now I'm going to turn the whole thing over. I'm going to take this point at the bottom right and fold that back on itself so that it's neat and flush with the left hand edge here. And don't worry, I'll show you another one with a spotty piece. Take our scissors and just cut in an arc around the top. And you're going to cut so that all of these extra bits at the top are chopped off cut and do a little arc and we have a little flower shape we've got the pretty stamped ink and something that is going to be bigger than this one when we cut this one so let's in fact what I'm going to do I'm going to show you what difference it makes if we cut in a more of an arc. Let me just, this is one of the variations you can do. If you cut and go down the side a little bit more, we end up with a flower head, a petal, that's got more of that fancy edge to the flower, which I actually quite like in this project. So let's do one more. Take our squared piece of paper, fold it up. Nothing too hard in that. I'm going to take the bottom right corner and fold it up to a third of the way down on the left hand side. And then we're going to take this corner and also position it exactly in the same place, a third of the way down on the left hand side. We're on the home straight. We're going to turn the whole thing over. Turn it over. And again, we're going to take this little point on the bottom right and fold that up so that we make a little cone shape. 
take our scissors and cut off all of that messy top. You do trim quite a bit of the paper off, so even if you start with a relatively big square it will come to something a fair bit smaller. Arc it round and let's see what we've got. And I quite like the five petal flower concept. Visually it works. We've got a larger one and a smaller one and they're pretty much in the size that will work on the front of our envelope. So it's the fun time to play to bring it all together and the first thing I'm going to do is give the envelope a little border. I think it, it helps. So with a black gel pen I will go round and I, I'm not doing dots and dashes on this one. I think a fairly scribbly individual line works well and I'm doing rounded corners not a 90 degree corner and I'm not worrying in fact I don't want super straight lines I want it to feel a little bit handmade as indeed it is so a border we have done and I will add a little bit of texture before I add the flower so for this I'm going to take a piece of material so any sort of fabric in your stash. Let's just get a little bit of texture going on behind. What is that big enough? Just something scrippy scrappy. And I'm also going to use adding a little bit more interest for the eye, a stamp, so I've got a black ink pad, so this should show, and it's just a paid stamp, I've used it in some other projects. I'm estimating roughly where the flower will sit, so that I can add a little bit of interest there, and I went for a black on this front, I've used brown ink on some of the others, because I felt that went with the rest of the pieces of paper that I'd used. So I've got some texture down and I also think it works well with some sort of label on the front. So I've delved into the box known as Tracy and I will add one of those. I don't think it needs a lot and I think to get the position right I'm going to wait till I've added the flower. So let's put the flower together, put that on I will try to keep the text upright. I'm just going to be careful that the petals don't overlap on the edge of the envelope to make that easier for when we use it in a junk journal. Glue. Glue in the centre, quite a lot of it. I can go down and I want a centre to my flower which I will make with some of the same scrapbook paper. I'll just cut a very wiggly circle to go in the middle, not too big. And I like these to be slightly distressed. So give that scrunch in the palm of your hand, glue in the middle, get that down. Then I'm going to add a couple more details. So a bit of coloured glue so this is glue with mica in it. Let me show you. So this is a glitz glue. I've had it for absolutely ages and I like the, the bronze gold colour. I've got some sequins in a variety of shapes and sizes and these seem to last forever so I think it's great to find projects that we can use them in. And now we have definitely a more precise focal point on that flower which I really really think is important that seems to help and I can finish off with one of my little labels tucked under here. You could add a splosh of paint if you've got mica you could spray a bit of that on too, in fact I might do that in a minute. But how quick and easy for making altered envelopes and how much fun. You could crack through quite a few of these I think and make a collection for your junk journal. I will add a little bit of mica spray 
and this is my altered envelope for junk journals. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed seeing me make this and subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. I also think you may enjoy seeing me make the collage cover for my junk journal. If you like collaging and gluing and playing with paper then I have a three part series on my channel where I put all of this together step by step. Have fun making your altered envelopes. I hope to see you soon.